We have lunch coming up in a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> I know you're sorry. <laughs> and, um, but Jeff and I are going to sit down and answer a few. Uh, give us 15 minutes. We're going to answer some questions. Thanks. We're going we're gonna to take any questions you can think of. We've got some of our own to you know, kind of spur what ideas you might have. It's good. It is good. That's your first time making it, right? Mm. Here, Jeff, this is for you, and you put your ice pack on your foot. I'm going to give this to the girls. I'm going to go get another chair. You want to give this to the girls? I will. Okay. Here's our questions. Go ahead and start. Question. Hey, Crystal. Said yes, sir. You mentioned you're going to add some Jerry Dillon to it. I don't know. You saw how I, how I added the, the other stuff. I don't know. You know, that's the fun of this stuff. You know, you saw yesterday. You know, we just, you go for it. You see what you like. That's why your ice cream store is going to be different from mine. You may you take my recipes, but you'll play with them. If I make amaretto chip ice cream, which I do, you may decide you want amaretto fudge or, or uh, amaretto and Kahlua mixed together, you, you know, whatever. So it's really, once you get your store, it's a springboard for everything you want to do. Now, you got to eat this, it's mine. You got to do it. I don't care what you do with his, but you got to eat mine. I know that you do liquor in your ice cream. You do? How do you know that? Did I? <laughs> What's your question? Um, do, you, do you have a liquor license? Do you need to acquire a liquor license for that? Why do you want to know? <laughs> in case I know someone who would like to do the same thing. Where? As in? Where? Um, well, near Miami. Near Miami. Tell them to check their local laws. Come here. Come here. Everybody, this is Samantha Jane Thompson. She's in all the videos. And uh, those of you who have seen the older videos, uh, Sarah Jane Thompson, Sadie, was with us for... Oh, no, she no, can't have that. Really? Chocolate. It's no chocolate. It's Nutella. Oh, she still can't have it. There's more for me. Oh, oh here. Lick the ball. Um, no. Oh. 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 Boo. So Sadie, is, Sadie was with us for 13 years and seven months. Sadie and, had everything. And Yeah, and she was known all over the world. And now Sammy here is nine months old. So she's already pretty big. Looks just like Sadie. Yes, she does, and she's still a big puppy. So we took her out for a walk over in Jupiter the other day. She ate two small children and knocked over <laughs> an old lady. No big loss, right? <laughs> she's, she's like, I'll, I'll you, okay. you go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to show off Sammy for a minute, and then I'll okay. get rid of her. There's tons of questions, but trust me, this is a very simple business. 90% of all the questions you think of and ask are answered day one when you get your machine and before you open your doors and you're ready to roll. Yes? This is apparently one, not one of those questions. Well, it is one of those questions, but the creamery, you get from your local dairy? Is there any specification on the amount of milk you get from the dairy? You know, they dictate that. In Florida, there are two of them that you can buy from. One is in Boynton Beach uh, called Ice Cream Club, and one is in St. Petersburg called Dairy Mix. And, uh, for instance, the one in St. Petersburg makes their mix, by, and they add a little vanilla to it. You can't get it without it. It is what it is. Uh, in uh, South Florida, their mix tastes different. I was using one of them, and then the salesman from the other came and said, try mine. And he did a blind test for me between the two mixes. Now, apparently, they're all the same. So I wasn't excited about this. He put down both of them while my back was turned, and he said, now taste each one. I tasted one, and I said, yep, that's, my, uh, that's what I use. He said, try this one. And I was blown away. It was, it was night and day. I guess similar ingredients, but something was different. It tasted much, much better. So I switched on the spot. But basically, <laughs> it mixes a bad term because it sounds like a powder. It's a blend, and it came out of the cow yesterday. And someone who is a dairy scientist, yes, thank you, who knows what they're doing, uh, blended milk, cream, sugar, and skim milk uh, to become up to a certain percentage of uh, milk fat, which we call butter fat. There's no butter in ice cream. Um, 
And so that is one way you pick a dairy is you bring in all the dairies that are in your area and then uh, blind taste test them and see which one you like the best. Um, but these scientists know things that the average person doesn't. We uh, uh, recommend for people who want to make their own mix uh, the Vat Pasteurizer Company. And we now make an aging tank for them, which is a fancy name for a chiller. So we're involved in that. There are some people who want to make their own mix. But before you think about doing that, do you really know the difference between a Jersey, a Guernsey, and a Holstein as far as uh, what the fat output is of each of those different cows? And do you know the difference between uh, the fat content uh, between winter and summer and what effect uh, the temperature has and, and rainfalls have on the product. That's a lot of variables that these dairy scientists know. Um, I've had people tell me, well, you know, you're, mixing, you're not really making homemade ice cream if you're not making your own mix. I said, yeah, but when I bake a cake, I'm also not, uh, gr uh, I don't have a wheat field out back either, and I'm not milling my own wheat. So we do have to put certain limitations on things um, and, and still be homemade. And again, you may not like it, but you still have to worry about cost. If you're going to end up costing a lot more than other people, uh, then you know people aren't going to be able to buy your product. Yes. It does. Oh, the cows. I believe it. And you know, let's let's boil this down. You're all sitting here and you're all watching at home for very basic reasons. You don't want to work for anybody else anymore or initially. You're tired of that. We all were. You want to make money, and you want to be fairly recession-proof. Well, if you think about it, every living being on this earth loves ice cream. It's just a no-brainer. You can be in Nigeria, you can be in China, you can be in Los Angeles. Everybody loves ice cream. Very hard to think of a product other than that where every, per every being on this earth wants what you make. There, there is nothing else. So... We want to get into the business and not be beholden to somebody else for our paycheck. Uh, and yet we want to make decent money. You can make decent money. You can start making decent money, and then the sky's the limit from that. A few days ago, somebody asked me, how much can I make? And uh, my answer is, how much do you want to make? And that's really where it is. You can have one small store, be very happy, make a nice living for your family, and not be under somebody's thumb. Or you can start there, open up two more stores, franchise, you can do whatever you want, and then you're creating a legacy for your family. Uh, so it really depends upon you, but the basic reasons are all the same. I've taught hundreds of people, it's all the same. I don't want to work for anyone else, I want to make good money, and I want to set my own schedule. And that's it. Plus you add in fun and creativity, the world's your oyster now. When I, um, eight years ago, I, we came up with the CB350 and then the 200. And the idea was there were so many people unemployed who did not want to go on welfare. They wanted to work for a living. They weren't afraid of lurk, working long, hard hours. But they couldn't afford a larger machine. So we brought out a smaller one. And the only difference between the smaller one and the larger one, material-wise, is there is no difference. It's just one makes uh, six quarts in eight minutes. The other one makes... 12 or 24 quarts in eight minutes, and, or 44 quarts in eight minutes. Uh, but it's affordable. It gets people into business. And when you're a new entrepreneur of whatever age, you're doing everything in the store. Everything is your responsibility. You unlock the doors. You empty the trash cans. You order. Uh, you go buy your flavors. You make the ice cream. Clean the bathrooms. Hmm? Clean the bathrooms, yes. <laughs> Absolutely everything. And then what happens is you become... People love your product, and you start making money. Money's coming into the bank. And then you do something that you'll see on Shark Tank. All of a sudden, you look at yourself and say, and it only took me 25 years to learn this. You look at yourself and say, you know, if I wasn't showing up at 7.30 in the morning in the Bronx to be the first person in the factory, I could have stayed home for an extra hour and be talking to Dubai and, and Malaysia and Hong Kong, where other customers are. Instead, no. I still felt I had to go open up the doors because I'm the entrepreneur. You know, once you get rid of the ego and you start saying, how can I better use my time, then you might buy a larger machine from me uh, and continue to expand the business because uh, the dreaded word, Trump, the only difference between, or one, different, or one thing that you, me, and Trump have in common is we only have a 24-hour day. 
we have to use that 24 hours as effectively as we can. So in the beginning, as an entrepreneur, you'll do everything. But as the business grows, you need to learn how to delegate authority to other people so that you can concentrate on the most important things that are going to grow your business. What else you got on that list? Oh, I got tons of stuff. Oh, give me one. Uh, no questions there, because these are past questions, and, and they all bear worth it. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a quick. I mean, I know, no, no. no, I know that. Uh, ice cream's not good for them. They shouldn't be eating dairy. But I'll tell you a fast story. There was uh, there's a product out called Frosty Paws, yeah. and I saw it a few years ago in the store, and uh, I saw these two young entrepreneurs being interviewed on uh, on uh, computer, and they said, "Yeah, we hope it's going to be a success. We uh, we're going to make this product for dogs. It doesn't have dairy in it, but it's frozen and it's a delicious treat." And probably about a year and a half later, after I saw that video, I see Frosty Paws in the supermarket, and up in the right-hand corner is a little checkerboard that says, this is the insignia of Purina. These guys have not only made it so big that Purina bought them out, they're sitting on a Caribbean island somewhere counting their money. So it was a great product uh, that really took off. So, and there's another one, Dogsters, I think it's called. Uh, but these are great products for dogs. And, I've had people do build ice cream parlors where you cannot bring a dog in uh, to the ice cream parlor. The health department doesn't allow it. But you can have a water bowl, uh, or a wa they have a little water fountain and a hitching post for the leash so that the dogs can stay outside while the humans get the ice cream. And believe it, uh, you know it, us dog owners will do anything for our dogs. Now I'll tell you what's happening more and more in my store. I see people walk in with a little poodle, a terrier, and it's a service dog. Oh, gee. <laughs> it's a service dog. There's a 200-pound lady walking in <laughs> with a little Yorkie, and it's a service dog. <laughs> it's got a little coat on it that says service dog, and they bring them in. I can't stop them. Um, well, yes, I can, right? You could ask for their credentials. Out. But yeah, out. <laughs> out. Uh, I have a question for Steve. Who? My first machine was a six-quart air-cooled machine right behind us. My next machine was a 24-quart water-cooled machine. Now, everybody told me, I think him included, that the air coming off of your machine is going to raise the air conditioning uh, costs in your room. And the water will use up your hot water, your, your water uh, more. Now, what I found is maybe not what he says. So let's hear what the doctor says about the difference between buying an air-cooled, because you're all going to face this, an air-cooled machine versus a water-cooled machine. It depends on the size of the machine, first off. These two little ones, that's using a two-horsepower compressor, that's using a one, and um, they're not so big that they're generating a lot of heat. We raise the temperature of this room, but not by much. When you get into these bigger machines, the compressors are so large, they're really throwing off a lot of hot air, a tremendous amount. I could raise the temperature of this room uh, 15 degrees in an hour. Now, the problem there is water is expensive. We all know that. And sewer we're being charged for, too. Sewer is expensive. But water and sewer go up. It's already expensive, but it goes up pennies a year. Electricity, if, I, if that thing's throwing off a lot of heat and it's in my store where I, I'm not worried about me, but I've got to make my customers comfortable, I have to turn the air conditioning colder. And air conditioning is based on electricity, which is based on fossil fuel and the price of fossil fuel goes up every time there's another war in the Middle East. It's very unstable. So over, and you got a machine that's gonna last 45 years, but even if you're only in business, say for 20, um, it's gonna continue to escalate at a very rapid pace as far as your electric bill because they're just not building any more power plants, whereas your water bill is going up very slowly. Now, if you got into a position where the business continued to grow and you had three Emory Thompsons, on a water cooled on your water system, uh, there's a very good solution. It's probably about six thousand dollars, and it's a, a water circulating system. It looks like your air conditioning unit for your home, your central air conditioning out back. They get rid of the water and they hook it up with glycol, which is antifreeze, and they the, the 108 degree antifreeze comes out of my machine, goes back to the air conditioning unit outside, chills it, and comes back in. So it's a continuous loop. 
I don't think they pay for themselves until you get up to two or three machines. But there is that alternative, whereas hot air from an air-cooled machine is always going to be hot air. Nothing you can do about it. The only people who buy air-cooled nowadays are because there's water restrictions. Uh, Los Angeles County, uh, water is very scarce. There's water restrictions. You can't buy uh, water-cooled equipment. The island of Jamaica, uh, they are dependent on rainwater, so they're not going to let you use water to cool an engine. Uh, there's a lady I sold to up in Boston who had unique restrictions. She was going to have a water-cooled machine and then just dump the, the 108 degree water into the pond out back. But the pond out back was also a cranberry bog, and the 108 degree water would have killed off the cranberries. So she had to go with an air-cooled machine. <laughs> As far as operation, they run identical. Whether that was air-cooled or water-cooled, uh, they're built in temperatures of 110 degrees. Uh, we know how to build for extremes. That machine that the people watching this can't see that's behind us was built for the United States Marine Corps. That's a 24-quart with a uh, 30 below zero 70-gallon hardener, and that thing gets dropped into some of the most uh, remote, desolate, horrible places on Earth so that uh, the Marines can have uh, ices and ice cream uh, wherever they go. I mean, everybody needs a treat. And since they can't fly in you know, Budweiser, they have ice cream and ices. Uh, so those things are very well designed to take the, the extremes. So in our machines, there's no difference between air and water. I know if you buy a little tiny version of my two-quart called the Musso uh, out of Italy, you can only run it for three batches, and then it's got to rest for an hour and a half. You know, what good is that? You know, we build things that run 24 hours a day. An hour and a half <laughs> That's different. We both do. So when I bought the air-cooled machine, and now I was here, I didn't know. I bought the smallest machine I could afford, which is many people are going to do that. And that's the other question is what size batch freezer is the best? And it's what you can afford to get into business. That's right. The goal is let's get out from under the thumbs and let's open up a business with a product that every human being wants. It's a no-brainer. So if you've got $10,000 to put into your machine, now I profess in my class that I can put you into business for $15,000, and I can. It's a no-brainer. The machine is going to cost you ten. Everything else is incidental, but we do it. I mean, I, I explain how we do it. If you've got more money, then the 24 is the way to go. I started my business on the six-quart machine, went a year and a half, made a lot of money, worked hard. Uh, you work longer, not harder, but longer because the batches are smaller. But who cares? You get up at uh, 3 in the morning and you can't sleep, you go make ice cream. Go to your store, open the doors, close the door behind you, put on some music, and make ice cream. It doesn't matter. Your time is really not what you're being paid for when you open a business because it's all your time. When I got to the 24, I was in heaven. Now I'm, I'm quadrupling my output every time I make a batch. Now I, I need more because I can't do it. You know, I, I mean, I could hire somebody to run it when I'm not there, but I'm a little finicky about the ice cream. Uh, so that's the size. Get what you can afford. That's right. Uh, bigger, you, yes, sir. Good question. Capigiani, to, to, the question is, can you put an adapter on the outside of the machine to fill uh, retail packages, pints? Uh, the answer is no. Capigiani came out with a $3,000 door that they could put on a machine the size of my uh, CB350, and they got sued and had to buy them all back because they just didn't understand the principle of making ice cream. Imagine a company as big as Capigiani, they don't understand how to make hard ice cream. Um, a batch freezer is exactly that. It's making a batch of ice cream. Let's take your oven at home and, and call it you know, your General Electric oven. Let's call it a batch oven for a moment. You put a steak into the batch oven. You want it to cook to medium rare. So in eight minutes, it's medium rare, and you take the batch of steak out of the oven. If you treated it like a soft ice cream machine or a machine to fill pint containers, you would take a slice of steak out, and then you'd take another slice. And then another slice. By the time you sliced up the whole steak, that thing's been cooking for another six minutes or four minutes, and the first slices are medium rare. The last slices are way overcooked because the batch freezer continues to batch. 
uh, to, to freeze. The oven continues to heat. When you turn off the heat on the oven, does it get instantly stone cold? No, it stays hot for a long time. That's why you crack the door open and you can hear the fan going. Um, a batch freezer, I don't care whose batch freezer it is, should not be used for pints and quarts because even though I can do it um, uh, by filling a few quarts and pints at the beginning and then take the rest out into a tub like I would do with a 24, for the most part your pints are going to weigh uh, different. You cannot have inconsistency in any business. Uh, when you go to Jeff's, if you go to Jeff's, you know, once every four years and you love his key lime pie, it better taste just like you remember it. And so, and your pints have to be equal in weight. In weight. So you hand pack them. You make the ice cream, throw it in the freezer, go back and make some more ice cream. Then after about 35, 40 minutes, you pull your ice cream that you made out of the freezer and you hire someone at minimum wage to stand there with a spade, not a spoon, but a spade, and you fill those pint containers by hand. And you put the lid on it, wipe it off, you put it in your freezer upside down. And the reason for the upside down, it's a little trick, so if the health department's watching, stop watching. Uh, if, there's an, if there's an air gap in there, when they, if it's upside down, when they take the lid off, the package will appear to be full. When you stick your spoon into that haagen if there was an air gap, it automatically disappears because you just compacted the ice cream. Hey, what do you mean? I'm not getting my money's worth? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, you do not want a package at the batch freezer. If you got into a huge business, or as Donald Trump says, huge, 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 huge. If you get into a huge business, then you buy uh, from tdsawville.com a uh, package filler made for batch freezers, made for our batch freezers, for about $6,000. You make the ice cream, put it in the hopper, it's got a little pressure system and a foot pedal, and you push a pedal, and boom, a pint fills. Slide in another one, push pedal, boom, pedal, boom. And that's how you make high volume. Every problem that you have in your business can be solved by money. It's, it's the cold, hard fact. You start off spending as little money as you can, as Jeff said, and then if you need more time, and you need to do things easier, it's just going to cost you money because the ice cream business, we've been around for 111 years. We know all the solutions, and what we don't know, other people do. Uh, I'm learning every single day. I learn from Jeff. That's why he's here. And so the answers are out there. It's just a matter of how much time you have and how much do you want to spend. And like I said at the beginning, when you're an entrepreneur, you do everything on your own. Everything is very manual, and when the money starts coming into the bank, then you can start automating. More? Yeah. Okay. More. Uh, what's the maintenance on the equipment? When we say the equipment, we're, they were asking about this. What's the maintenance on it? Uh, he'll tell you what the maintenance is. I'll tell you there is none. <laughs> there is no maintenance on it. Uh, there's a couple of O-rings in there on the drive shaft that um, maybe every couple of years you change them or whatever, but uh, there's a gasket on the door. There's no maintenance. There's just no, they're just bulletproof machines. That's it. Uh, this is the, whoops. That's the... Uh, That's the maintenance right there. It's yeah, cleaning the coffee. floor. You know the difference between uh, owning a 2,400 square foot store and a 900 square foot store? What is that? A whole lot of mopping. <laughs> Uh, that's the 24, uh, that's the CB350 Dasher. There's two little black O-rings on here that are NSF approved. People go, how can you charge $7.95 for a little O-ring? Well, you're only buying it once every two years, and it has to be National Sanitation Foundation uh, manufactured and approved. A customer of mine went out and bought some at the hardware and wondered, wondered why they were chewing up every three months. And he was blaming me until I found out he was buying them at the hardware store for $4. So... You know, spring for the seven bucks every two years. Uh, two O-rings, you lubricate this with uh, what is called a sanitary lubricant. I call it Vaseline, and, and that's about it. Um, on the machine, on the blades itself, they're all, you'll see over there, they're all different sizes. These are going to last about six years. Everyone else is four to six months. These are six years. I uh, have one on my desk I could bring in. It's been uh, tested now for three months by Sammy. So it's Sammy approved, and all you're going to see is some teeth marks on it. I could put it in the machine today, and it's going to make ice cream. Um, and, and that's it. That's the maintenance. Don't ever, this, this really bugs me, Jeff, uh, when an unscrupulous refrigeration man comes in 
and you say, oh, my 15-year-old Emery Thompson is uh, now making ice cream in 12 minutes instead of eight, what does it need? He goes, well, 12 years, it, it probably needs a, a tune-up. We need to put a, a few pounds of Freon gas in it. Uh, we might change the expansion valve. Freon gas does not wear out, and it doesn't leak out <coughs> if it's built right. So anybody comes in on any piece of equipment you own and says, oh, that, that uh, dipping cabinet needs a tune-up. It needs a little gas. No, it doesn't. If it was built correctly and it's already gone nine years, it's not the compressor. Don't ever fall for a so-called tune-up. Um, those machines are very simple. Uh, cabinets of any kind, the Sears chest freezer, they don't need maintenance. The Emery Thompson, again, the blades once every six years. Um, and you'll know because you'll, you know, if you call up at four years and say my freezing time is 10 minutes instead of uh, uh, eight minutes, I'll say, well, maybe you ought to change those little tiny springs. Maybe they're getting worn out because the blades still have three years to go, uh, two or three years to go. So there isn't anything you have to do on an Emory Thompson. Unlike, and, oh, if you looked at other machines, which there aren't many left, you'll see on the side of the machine, um, let me show you where, you'll see a little plastic piece here with a hole in it. And you pull on it, and it's a drawer that slides out. And it's got ice cream all over it. And, it, and they say, clean that daily. What they're telling you is we can't build uh, to aircraft specifications the way Emory Thompson does, so our machines leak out the back. And so we're <laughs> admitting that, and you have to clean it every day. There is no pull-out drawer here. Now, if you call me up and you say, my 17-year-old Emory Thompson's leaking out the back, uh, and I'll say, when did you change the O-rings? And you say, what are O-rings? I say, well, you need to spend $14 for two O-rings. But there's no pull-out drawers on any of these, and they're on every other machine because they can't machine to our specifications. The building across the street that is ours is all CNC machines. Those are computerized, and they're all for making these parts. Everything here is made. Everything in our machine is right here. Good, good. What else, you, what else right, you got? Good. Oh, you want, right. Do we want lunch? Or you want? <coughs> it's, uh, they're, they're the boss. Are you hungry? Yeah. Oh, they're starving. Yeah. You have a question? Okay, I started with the air cool, and the only, uh, it's not a problem, the only uh, description I can come up with is that hot air blows out the back. Mm -hmm. uh, you, so you get hot air from me and hot air from the machine <laughs> out the back. It, it was fine. I, I didn't, you know, and I don't know anything. I'm, I, I don't know anything about anything, and the machine was fine. When I upgraded, I got a water-cooled machine because if you're a man, you feel that a motor needs water to cool it. It's more efficient. Probably wrong, but that's what I did. So my machine came with two hoses coming out the back. One hose needs water flowing into it to circulate through the machine. The other hose is the water coming out. So what I did was I hooked up the goes in hose to my mop sink with a $1.89 brass coupler from Home Depot. It screws onto my faucet, and the hose goes onto that. It's our garden hose. And I keep the water on, the cold water on all the time. And then the other one, the hose that comes out, I just laid it in my mop sink. Because a mop sink is like a hand sink. You don't need it. You've got an enormous three-bay sink with soap suds to beat the band. So that's where we wash our hands. And I'm sorry if the health department's watching, but that's what that's what everybody does, you know. Just not when they're there. We've never. Well, it's true. We've never. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what. Yesterday, somebody used my hand sink. Who was it? You used my hand sink and said, "The water's not draining from it." And I went over and I said, "Well, we've never used it. I'm in business seven years. We've never used the hand sink. Because if you have to wash your hands, the first thing we do in the, when we come in is fill up the first bay of the sink, and you saw me do it here, with soap suds, hot water and soap, because that's where you clean everything. The middle one is used for rinsing. You wash in the soap suds, you rinse in the clear water, and you sterilize, which nobody does, in the end sink. They just, I'm telling you reality. It's no just one not does. Done. No, nobody does it. Yeah. So the mop sink is useless. Because the girls, at the end of the night, take a five-gallon Home Depot bucket, 
fill it with hot water from the three bay sink, just hot water into the, and pour it into that yellow thing that rolls around the house, the, the store with, with pine salt in it. So that's it. Uh, so the mop sink I dedicate to the machine and the water comes in and then goes out. I have developed a great idea for the water that's coming out. It comes out slightly warm, not as warm as I thought it would, uh, not as hot, certainly not hot, but it comes out warm. And what I do is when I'm running a batch and the water's coming out, because it only comes out when the refrigeration is on, when you can run the machine all day without it and the no water's coming out. But as soon as you use the refrigeration, the water comes out. And what I do is I take the hose and I stick it in the drain of my three-bay sink to rinse through any cream that's, that's been put through the drains to stop me from a service call every year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that does it. It's a good idea. Perfect. Oh, the other thing I do, ah, this is good. Hold on one second. The other thing I do, which is a great tip, the, I, when I get my mix every Tuesday morning, my bladders, I have the guy, because he has a key and he puts them away, he freezes them, puts them in the freezers for me. And so I'm often dealing with, I tell the girls at night, take out two boxes, take out one box, or take out six boxes, whatever I know I have to make the next day. And they put them in the three bay sink covered with water overnight. And so they thaw. Now, as you saw yesterday, they didn't thaw completely, right? They were still semi-frozen in there. So I take the, the bladders with some semi-frozen bladder mix in it, and I put it in the mop sink where that warm water is coming out from the machine. And it, it builds up, and then the, the bladders are fine after you. Just don't forget, like I did yesterday, <laughs> to, to remember that the bladder is going to block the drain in the mop sink, and the water is going <laughs> to... And he caught it just in time before it overflowed. But it worked. It defrosted the, uh, the bladder for me. Uh, hold on one second. Yes, sir. Are there different health department requirements for making ice cream as opposed to Italian ice? No. Same thing. They come in. They want to check the temperature of your freezers. They have this digital thing that checks your freezers. They check. I got fined for my spatulas. I'm a spatula guy. I love spatulas. And I, I didn't get fined. I got cited for my spatulas being spatula side up in the containers that I have them because he said, well, you can't be grabbing a spatula. And I said, well, my hands are clean. I wash them a thousand times a day. And I have to see what spatula I'm taking. He said, no, they have to be upside down. So he wrote me up on it because he couldn't find anything else. And they came back a reinspection to see that this is insane, to see that my spatulas were now turned upside down in the can. So you had to drill a hole to hang them? No, I just turned, I, they're in a can. With the okay, blade okay. sticking up, yeah, yeah. I went like this, and I turned them over and put them in the can. Okay. And now I don't know what spatula I'm grabbing when I have to grab a spatula. Right. So I wound up being counterproductive. I grab one, the other ones fly out. And it's a whole ridiculous thing. It shows the illogic of the world. Uh, and I'm a 60s guy, and we were built on just logic. We question everything. So that's what they do. They check stuff like that. They, they don't really check the integrity of your ice cream, which is what they should be checking. Uh, they check the temperature of your freezers, uh, basically. And, and they look around to make sure there's no obvious critters, you know, and stuff like that. And, and mil you know, dairy's a funny thing. It tends to get rancid if you don't address it. Uh, but we address it. You know, you'll find, you'll, you'll never be cleaner than when you open an ice cream store. You'll love the clean cleanliness of it. So no, there's no difference. It's the regular health department. But when you go to get your license, also ask them, since you're going to all the work of setting everything up, uh, what is involved in getting a wholesale manufacturer's license? So you can wholesale to restaurants. You may never do it, but usually it's about $25 more and you probably already meet all the requirements. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, it depends on the state. Back in New York, I had, uh, you know, you have a normal driver's license and then I had a class one trucker's license. It was just a few more tests, and uh, I was driving a truck for the company and a, a few bucks, and I figured, hell, I'll do it. If the cops stop me, at least I've got a, a better grade of license. So <laughs> the cop stops me for doing 110 on the Long Island Expressway, and I show him my license, and he says, oh, you've got a trucker's license. You should have known better. <laughs> you should take it. <laughs> I had failed. Yes. <laughs> Custard is, is a, an ice cream that has egg yolks in it. 
And uh, as recent as four years ago, three years ago, I made custard at the store, and it was a big process. I, I bought a huge pot, and I would go home at night and take a bladder, put the bladder in, and I would scramble eggs in a separate bowl. And then while the bladder is heating up, while the, the mix is heating up on this enormous pot, I would be very slowly whisking in the egg yolks, very slowly. And, uh, and then I would let it cool overnight. Then I would bring it into the store the next day and make the most amazing custard in the world. It, it, nothing beats custard. It's, oh, it's great stuff. Just ask um, Ted Drew in St. Louis. I mean, he made a, a anyway. Uh, then I, I found that instead of doing that, they, they already sell pasteurized egg yolks now in milk cartons. So you can, at your store, you can take the, the bladder, put it in your machine, take these pasteurized egg yolks, pour them in while the blades are running, add your vanilla, and you've got amazing custard, amazing custard. The, um, the company that makes it is out of New Jersey, and it's called... Uh, it's pronounced paw petty, like a dog's paw, and then petty, paw petty. But it's spelled, it looks like it's a, it's a Tahitian island. It's spelled something like P-A-U-P-E-T-T-I. But uh, look at Google search paw petty. Uh, eggs have become very dangerous uh, because of bird flu, and I've got a lot of dairies who tell me they just won't touch it. But using the frozen pasteurized egg yolks is perfectly oh, safe. frozen too now? Yeah, you can buy it frozen wow. but, and shipped. But uh, you got to also think about, uh, are you going to be turning off any customers because it's got egg yolks in it? Uh, there's more people than you think who are allergic to egg yolks, well, you, or you they're just afraid of eggs. You wouldn't sell it solely. You would have it in addition to your ice cream. I agree with you. I would do it that way. Yeah. But, the, but a Ted, Ted Drew, Drew is just all egg yolks. Just custard. Oh, yeah, man. Just custard. I, and, you know, Ted Drew, St. Louis, by the way, Google him. Uh, the man is brilliant. He has a round building, and every night of the year, all these 12 windows around the building, every night of the year, lines all night long. And they're all local people that he's supported, getting scholarships to. Amazing story. It's, Look up Ted Drew. It serves Lewis. soft, uh, like, a, like, ice, like soft ice cream. It yeah. is a soft ice it's cream. It's custard. And it's custard. And, and Ted is a marketing genius. He goes off to Hawaii for vacation, and he doesn't have a vacation. He sends back press releases that say, Ted is in uh, Oahu uh, investigating uh, macadamia nuts right. for macadamia <laughs> right. custard next spring. And there he is with a rum runner on the beach. <laughs> yeah, and there are people, he's got two other stores in St. Louis, and there are people to this day who will swear the other stores just don't taste the same as a, his original store. <laughs> Let's break for lunch. Okay, but look him up. A yeah. Great story, Ted yeah. Drews. We invented the custard machine that uh, like Ted Drew's uh, back in 1923, but I stopped making it in the late 90s because the and market of course, was too the, small. The books are on sale starting ten minutes now, right now, <laughs> and information on the the classes is also uh, yes. on sale. <laughs>